overturn Roe v. Wade. To overturn Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade overturned. Abortion rights are under attack. With the Supreme Court poised to gut or overturn entirely abortion rights nationwide that were established in the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade decision. A ruling is expected by late spring and a new movement, Rise Up for Abortion Rights.org, is determined to bring forward resistance massive enough to defeat this assault on abortion rights. On March 8th, International Women's Day, they will protest and march in New York City, Los Angeles, and nationwide. As part of building momentum for this, they staged a speak out and nonviolent civil disobedience at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City on February 27th. You may be charged with additional crime to the prisoner transport. The Supreme Court has made it clear that they are going to obliterate women's fundamental right to control their bodies and their lives. If you don't stand up now, you are facilitating female enslavement. March 8th, International Women's Day, all across this country, fill the streets with our fury, abortion on demand and without apology. Here are some highlights of that day. So together, Let's make this International Women's Day 2020 the day that the fascists and the women haters began to get nervous, began to realize that those they have stepped on, those they have discounted, those they have disrespected, those they have treated as zeros, rose up and started to change the tide. So we're here in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral and we're out here with Rise Up for Abortion Rights. And we're here because we refuse to let the U.S. Supreme Court deny women's humanity and decimate their rights. 33 years ago, I stood here with the New York Pro-Choice Coalition and raised this hanger, this same hanger. And this is a symbol of only one of the things that women used when they didn't have access to legal and safe abortions, you see? And so many women, so many women died. Well, I'm here today to get your attention. I want to get the attention of every woman and girl and every person of conscience in this country because women's rights are in a far more critical state of emergency now, a far more critical state of emergency. I started one of the first abortion clinics, legal abortion clinics, in New York in 1971. I am also, I stand here as a woman who had an abortion when I was 32 years old because I did not want to be a mother at that time. I could have been, I was married, I had all of the supports, but I chose, I chose, I chose not to be a mother. We must take the responsibility out of the closet. Own your lives, own your moral choices. Your body is your country and your dreams are your own. Protect and defend them. If not you, if not me, then who? Who? And if not now, when? Roe did more than establish a woman's right to abortion. It solidified and expanded the constitutional right to privacy. Included in that is right to contraception, procreation, marriage, family, family relations, child rearing, and intimacy, meaning sex. In 1962, I lived in a building in a six-floor walk-up, and I still live in a six-floor walk-up, a different one, on West 10th Street. And on the third floor was this very exotic woman. She was a cabaret performer. She had jet black hair, and I used to go hear her at the Blue Angel on 8th Street. One morning, she called me at 6.30, and she said, Jim, would you come down here right now? I went down. She still had an apartment with a bathtub in the kitchen. You have to be old enough like me to understand those days. I looked at her, 
and it was full of red water. She said, you must go to the, the drugstore and get me maximum strain Kotex. Now, you have to understand what that meant to this young gay man. I was embarrassed. I had, those were women's things over there. But I did it. And I came back. And she was dead. Dead! Because she had had a botched abortion over in what was the meat market at that time. As a black woman and a single mother of two, abortion without apology enabled me to send two girls to college. We need to be able to make our own choices. We are not incubators. I'm going to repeat, we are not incubators. I had an, Ill an illegal abortion in 1969. When I returned home a week later, I was reading the morning paper, and there was my abortionist on page three, charged with murder. He perforated a woman's uterus while helping, uterus while helping her. That could have been me. That could have been me. Growing up in the Catholic Church, I was taught to think that abortion was a bad thing. And I was trained to think that women just had to, they had to be mothers. And my best friend came to me when I was 16 years old in an abusive relationship and said to me, help me get an abortion. And I said no. And I didn't even think about what it was like for her to be living in a situation where she had to go back to an abusive partner and give birth to yet another child that she did not want. When I changed my ways of thinking and understood what an abortion actually is and understood that without this basic right, women are reduced to nothing more than breeders of children. And their life and what they're going through just gets completely erased out of the situation. Uh, we have a very special guest. She's flown here from San Antonio to testify about being denied an abortion after a br brutal gang rape when she was a teenager. I went to the, to the, the office with the nurse, I challenged, what happened to me? The, 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 that guys from the school raped me. I need help because I can't have a child. They say, no, the, the babies have protection. You don't have rights. So I don't say my parents. I go to the street. I go with my baby. I was in the street. When I, when I saw my kid, grow up and watching me and tell me, mom, who is my dad? You know, I told, and that's stupid laws, and that's a stupid men who made the law. So how I said, my son, you are from different men. I don't know who is your daddy because I was raped. You know, and now, now I, I want to cry hard, hard, hard. Because I am very angry. Because the law don't protect really the women. I am, I have rights. I decide in my body. I decide if I, if I have that child. I decide if I am in conditions to have that kid. We have heard a lot of stories today. We have heard the truth of what it means when the state, driven by Christian fascist hatred of women, forces women to have children against their will, or drives them to desperate measures to avoid it. This is the truth. Forced motherhood is female enslavement. But we have also heard courage and in just a few minutes, sisters and brothers, we are going to demonstrate our courage. We are going to see bravery. Because we have come to understand that it is time to put it on the line. Because this fascist program of control over women relies on us cowering in the silence that they heap on us. And today, at this moment when Roe v. Wade the right to abortion nationwide hangs in the balance. We have to say the truth here. 
This silence is being aided and abetted by the so-called leaders of the so-called women's movement who are telling you that you can do nothing but roll over and accept the obliteration of Roe v. Wade. Whatever they call this, however they dress it up, this is capitulation. And the fact that this so-called women's movement and the people of this country did not flood the streets in fury, did not shut down every freeway, did not walk out of every school, did not bring this society to a halt when the state took away the right to abortion to six million women of childbearing age in Texas last September. This is shameful. This is shameful. And this stops now. This stops today. Because when we rise, when we dare, when we back it up with our bodies on the line and the God's honest truth, then we are right. Right is on our side and they are wrong and the shame belongs on them. When we put it on the line, we can summon a force and call forward a force that is a match for these fascist women haters that is a match for these dark ages shame throwers, that is a match for these pompous patriarchal politicians who have no right to tell a woman what to do with her body and her life. This fury, this unbridled, unrestrained fury of millions and millions of women rising up and rebelling against thousands and thousands of years of tradition's chains. This fury is a force that can shake the whole society and it can change the whole world. And that is what we aim to do. Yes, this is going to take a fight. And yes, it is going to take sacrifice. And yes, at times, it's going to be scary. But I say, look at the women of Colombia. They won the decriminalization of abortion in a Catholic country, in a patriarchal, repressive state. They won it what tipped the tide is when they looked at the women of Argentina who are raising this green bandana and filling the streets with their fury relentlessly, courageously, in the face of sacrifice, and they won the right to abortion. In the streets, March 8th, we will puncture the silence, we will wake up millions more, and then we will go to work together to do the hard but necessary and inspiring work to spark and spread and organize tens of thousands more and ultimately millions in a movement massive enough, righteous enough, defiant and relentless enough that we sweep across this country and make clear to the fascists on the Supreme Court and women haters everywhere that if they try to take this right away, their society will be prevented from functioning it at all. We are going to demand the Supreme Court not decimate women's rights and deny their humanity. We are going to fight and win abortion on demand and without apology.